what is going on you guys this is tech hd coming at you with a brand new video and this one is going to be a bit different because we're going to be reviewing a laser engraver and cutter from creality and this is the falcon 2 pro and it is different from my normal tech videos but if you guys have watched my videos for a while then you know that i reviewed a 3d printer back in the day years back and i still use it to this day and now i've been wanting to get more into laser engraving as well and learn it and be able to create my own things with my logo and stuff for my friends and family and just make some really unique things so apart from the Falcon 2 Pro, this is the 22 watt version, by the way, we also got the Rotary Kit Pro, and that is gonna be for like mugs and rings and stuff like that for curved surfaces. Also the riser for when you're using the Rotary Kit Pro. And then we also got the Honeycomb Workbench for better heat dissipation, and then the Smoke Purifier to filter everything out when using the laser engraver and the cutter indoors, which I think is really necessary because the smell does get pretty strong after a while, and it does linger, and it will mess with your eyes and stuff like that. So these are going to be the products that we're going to be using and I'm going to have links to everything down in the description below. We're also going to be using the Lightburn software, which I think is the most widely used software out there when it comes to laser engraving and cutting. And we'll talk about the key features, show you guys some test examples, and then I'll give you guys my overall thoughts. So without further ado, let's get started. So diving into the unboxing and setup process, everything arrived in its own individual packaging and everything was well protected and nothing was damaged. For the smoke purifier, it was already pre-assembled. The smoke and air will go through three types of filters starting with the pre-filter that captures larger visible particles, then the efficient filter which captures up to 99.98% of the particles. And last is the activated carbon filter which absorbs the harmful gases and unpleasant odors. Next, we got the Honeycomb Workbench with a surface space of 500 by 500 millimeters, and it comes with two pieces, the Honeycomb platform and the aluminum plate for protecting your desktop from damage. Next is the Rotary Kit Pro, which comes with the unit itself, the hex stud, extra forearm screws, an Allen wrench, and a measuring tape. Lastly is the Falcon 2 Pro itself, and this came with many individual pieces and looked intimidating at first, but it wasn't that bad. The instructions were very clear and it took just over 30 minutes to get everything up and running. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below for Creality's in-depth setup video so you guys can follow along when you're setting up your version. Now it's time to put the Falcon 2 Pro on the table and it just fits a two foot deep folding table. Now we'll connect the air assist unit, which is just one connection and the tube. Very simple to set up. Next, we'll add the ventilation tube into the Falcon 2 Pro, which is being held by a clamp, and the other end will be connected to the smoke purifier, also being held by a clamp, and that is it. On the other side, we'll start to connect the port for power and the USB-C to control the unit itself. You can also see that there is a power switch and a micro SD card slot for offline creation. There is also another USB-C port to connect the built-in camera, which is really nice. Taking a look at the I.O., you have the light switch on the right side that can switch on at all times or in auto, so it'll turn on when the unit starts to work. On the other side, you have another switch that does the same thing but for the integrated air assist fan and a scroll wheel to control the intensity. You also have the buttons on the front to control the laser's position, send it back home, show you the frame, and start, pause, and stop the work. Lastly, to turn on the unit, there are three things you need to do. The unit requires a key insert to turn on the unit, followed by the power switch on the side. And there is an emergency stop button for safety, so you twist that and you will now see that the unit is up and running. So now you are ready to get started with the software. Now before we begin, we'll want to calibrate the built-in camera to make sure that it's accurate. So in Lightburn, it walks you through setting it up and I'll leave a link down in the description below to Lightburn's walkthrough video that goes way more in depth. But pretty much with the provided calibration circle card that came with the unit, you are moving it all around the workbench and capturing images in the software. The camera uses a fisheye lens so don't be worried about the image it produces. Instead, worry about the score it gives that capture. That's far more important and you'll want to aim for a 0.3 or lower to get an accurate result. After that's done, it will want to run an alignment test, so I grabbed some regular letter paper so it could create the numbers and circles. After that's done, you'll just connect all four corners in the center of the circle for an accurate result. Now the camera has been calibrated and you can see it in the Lightburn software, and you are now finally ready to start your first engraving. Now the first test I ran was with some metal bottle openers and I wanted to see how well it did with engraving on metal and how accurate the camera was. The settings that I found that worked best were the speed at 6000, 20% power, 0.50 interval, and 1 pass count. That looked the best and the camera was pretty accurate when you get it all calibrated correctly. 
Now the next test I did was with some plywood, and this test was to see how well the smoke purifier does, so I had the power at 100%, and you could see the smoke just going into the fan, straight into the purifier, and I had the intensity at about 50%. It does get pretty loud, but I find it very beneficial and necessary when working in a close environment, like indoors and in the garage, where there are usually no windows because over time, the smell will start to get stronger and the more you inhale that, you'll start to get lightheaded, get headaches, and your eyes will start to get watery. That's what I experienced when I wasn't running the smoke purifier. Next, I wanted to test engraving on some leather, so I purchased some leather key fobs to put some logos or names, and the best settings for this was also 6000 speed at 20% power, but at a 1.0 interval, and at one pass count. That made the engraving look very detailed and clean, and the results turned out very nice. I also tried it on some leather coasters with the same specs, and again turned out very nice and detailed. It didn't damage the leather around it, and there were no burn marks thanks to the air assist, so I was really happy with how it turned out. Now the next test was on some thin metal business cards and this one I wanted to see how detailed and accurate the laser could get with like an SVG file. So I imported a lion with a lot of lines and detail around the face and for this I needed to slow down the speed and interval so I had enough time to engrave all the detail. So for this test I had it set to 1200 speed at 25% power, 0.50 interval and at a one pass count. The overall result looked amazing and it turned out so detailed. Now I did need to disable the air assist because since the business cards were so thin and light, the air would just move it around and mess up the engraving. So I love the fact that I can lower the intensity or just disable it entirely. Also, it seems like there was a bit too much power because it actually bent the business cards a bit, so I would recommend dropping the power down to about 22.5 or 23% and that should give you about the same result. I also wanted to do the test engraving on multiple business cards at the same time and it worked out but it did take much longer compared to doing it individually but just so you know you could do batch engravings and with the help of the camera and framing it makes it much easier. I did one engraving on a red card with Deadpool and one yellow card of Wolverine in celebration of the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie and it turned out very nice. Lastly, I tried another SVG file of a wolf on a blue card with the same specs and again, it turned out very nice and detailed. I was overall happy with the results once I dialed in the right settings. Now I wanted to do some tests with the Rotary Kit Pro. For this, you need to remove the pullout tray so there is plenty of space along with the rails or the honeycomb workbench. Next, you'll want to install the extra risers, which is sold separately. At first, I thought you needed to use two extensions on each side, but honestly, one is plenty, so I removed the extra extension. Once that's set, you can now place the Rotary Kit Pro and connect it to the unit with the four pins on the front. Also, there are two buttons on the front and side that will disable the safety center of the pullout tray and the lid, so since you need to remove the tray, you'll want to disable that. If not, the machine won't work and the alarm will go off, so make sure those buttons are turned off while you're using the Rotary Kit Pro. I am also using the aluminum plate that came with the honeycomb workbench so that I don't have the laser damage the table, just in case. Now that that's all set, in the light burn settings, you'll want to enable the show, rotary, enable on the main window. Also in the device settings, I highly recommend enabling the laser fire button and laser on when framing, and 3% was the best for me. This helps a ton when it comes to framing and making sure it's where you want to engrave it and it's not off. Now in the rotary setup, you want to set it to the chuck and make sure it's set to the Y axis. Also the millimeter per rotation should be set to 40. Lastly, you'll want your start from set to current position and it depends on you for the job origin. Now you're all set to use the Rotary Kit Pro. For this I practiced first on some soda cans to make sure that I got used to the settings. So I got the can clamped on and leveled the laser to the can. Made sure when it hit anything, I framed where it would begin and of course I measured the circumference of the can using either a tape measure or some calipers and put that into the Lightburn software. I just had to engrave some simple text and it worked out great and came out with no issues. So once I got comfortable with that, I moved on with trying it on some real mugs. For this iRobot mug, I wanted to practice doing a whole wrap so I measured the circumference which was about 84mm and the length of the mug which was about 15cm for where I wanted it to be engraved. I then made a design in Adobe Photoshop with those measurements and I wanted to do like a camo engraving. So I did that and I imported the file into Lightburn and put the measurements into the software. I then leveled the laser to the highest point, framed where it would begin and made sure it wouldn't go beyond the mug and begin the test. This engraving was set to 6000 speed at 20% power, 0.50 interval, and a one pass count, and it overall came out very nice and detailed. 
The next test I did was with this BenQ water flask, and I wanted to put my logo in the center underneath the BenQ logo, so I measured the circumference, which was about 26 centimeters, and the length, which was about 16 centimeters. I made my design in Photoshop and imported it, and put the measurements into the software, leveled the laser, framed it, and began the test. Now the logo looked good. It may have needed more power and it was not centered with the BenQ logo. So that was my fault. Next time I want to try it with a marking paper to have my logo pop more, especially on this type of chrome flask. The next test was engraving around a mug that has a logo like this Geek Squad mug. So I measured the circumference and length, made a design around the logo, leveled and framed the laser and began the test and the overall engraving came out great, but it was just a bit off with the Microsoft logo. It went a bit over the Geek Squad logo so that's how important measuring and framing correctly is. Now my last test is what I've been practicing for and I really didn't want to mess this up and that was engraving on my 40 ounce Stanley. So I removed the handle measured the circumference and length, and before I began the real test, I did a practice run by wrapping the Stanley with aluminum foil and then with some blue tape, and I'm so glad that I did this because it actually hit the back piece that holds the laser and it moved the entire Stanley, so I'm glad I did the test first and it didn't ruin it. Also, since Stanley is too long and has this big dip on the bottom, I needed to remove the end piece and elevate the lower part so it's more even, so I put two of the leather coasters to raise it up a little bit and it seemed to help a lot. Now began the real test and I loved how it looked. I put my own logo, gaming icons that I grew up with like the Xbox and Playstation, and my sponsors logos and stuff that resembles myself and my childhood. This took a little over an hour and a half and I had the speed set to 6000. 30% power, one interval, and one pass count. I thought everything turned out perfect, but when I wiped off the dust, it seemed like I didn't engrave deep enough on the bottom part, which I was so sad about, but it looks like next time I needed to be set to about 50% power instead of 30%. It also looks like it was going too fast, so I would need to lower the speed and maybe the interval as well. It still came out very nice and detailed, and I'm overall happy with the results. My second version will definitely come out better. The next thing I wanted to do was test the cutting portion. So I used some birch plywood with a thickness of about a quarter inch and in light burn I set the speed to 200, the power to 100%, the interval was set to 0.50 and a pass count of 2. It overall managed to cut through the wood very easily with very precise and accurate cuts. It did burn a bit of the wood and left a bit charred so I feel like having it about 75% will still be enough power to cut the plywood. The last major thing that I wanted to engrave was my logo on some camera accessories from Angel Bird, like my metal memory card holder, the reader, and the SSD, and I really didn't want to mess this up since I use this gear all the time and I wanted to look perfect. So I used the built-in camera to line my logo with the product, used the framing multiple times and with the fire feature enabled to make sure it's where I wanted it to be and it's not too big and it wouldn't engrave over it. I set the machine to the default which was about 6000 in speed, power at 20%, interval at 1.0, and then a one pass count. And I am so glad that I didn't mess these up and I'm so happy with how it turned out. The engraving looks so clean and professionally done, the detail of the logo is very nice and the sizing and where I wanted it to be was perfect. I am in love with how it turned out. So I have overall been very happy with using the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. There are so many features that it offers like the built-in camera to easily line up your design with what you're engraving on, the red protective cover so you won't need to wear protective glasses while using it, the pull-out tray to easily clean the mess and all of the safety features like the machine not working if the tray and if or the cover is open and it'll sound an alarm the emergency button to instantly stop everything, and the air assist to prevent fires and sensors to know if it's causing a fire. Now, of course, this is not perfect, and there are a few things that I would like to see fixed and updated in a future model. One is when you're using the Honeycomb Workbench, it is too tall that it prevents the pullout tray to work, so you'll need to remove the Honeycomb first in order to use it. The pullout tray needs to be deeper so it could fit the Honeycomb Workbench, and you'll still be able to utilize that feature. One of the ways I got it to work is by using the Honeycomb Workbench on top of the original uh, rails that comes with the actual unit, and that gives me the ability to use the Honeycomb and also be able to use the pullout tray. 
The second major con is that there needs to be a good amount of lighting for that built-in camera. That one light bar that's in the front is not enough to light the workbench and the image comes out dark and depending on the color of the product, it's difficult to see it clearly and to be able to put your design on it to make sure it's right. So I would love for there to be three more light bars making it a whole 360 degree lit area. That would make it so much easier to use the camera in the software and you'll be able to see the engraving easier through the red protective cover. Now the last major con is the built-in camera. If you do not calibrate the camera as accurate as you can and you are relying on the camera, your engraving will be off. I calibrated the camera multiple times and it's still not perfect and not exact to how it looks like in Lightburn. That's why I use the camera as a reference and mainly rely on the framing and the fire button as a much more accurate result. The camera needs to be updated and not be a fisheye lens because that's the main reason it's not accurate. But I have all been loving using the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. The results have been coming out very nice and detailed. Now it is a big learning curve and you're going to be making a lot of mistakes. I know I did when it came to multiple bottle openers, as you can see right here, these are all the messed up ones and also multiple um, metal business cards. But once you get the right settings, write it down, document it so you can easily go back to it and it will help you and save you so much time and headaches. Now the smoke purifier works really well and it removes a lot of the smell and the smoke. And of course, this is how the filter looks after using it for over a month. And it is definitely necessary when it comes to a closed environment like I have it right now in my garage. And this is absolutely dirty and it is insane. So it really helps a lot. Now the Rotary Kit Pro is awesome when it comes to curved products and I definitely want to get way more into that when it comes to more Stanleys, mugs, and even smaller, more detailed stuff like rings for example. Lastly, the Honeycomb Workbench is great when it comes to smoke dissipation and when it comes to cutting and engraving and you have a lot more bigger space for bigger projects compared to the actual rails that comes with the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. But there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do have any questions or concerns, please let me know down in the comments below. And everything that I mentioned is going to be linked down in the description as well. But there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. As always, Tech HD. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!